application without using any XAML. You can create the entire interface in C-sharp. I developed an app of 100 image buttons that we can click and turn them red or toggle them back to the original colors. And all done with C-sharp. There's a few advantages to using C-sharp for creating your interface. And one is you can manipulate the sizes based on the dimensions of the device. Remember that very first project we did, we found the dimensions of the device. We can use that and mathematically then determine the sizes that we want for the grids so it looks consistent across all devices. The other thing is repetitive views. So creating 100 image buttons in XAML code can be a daunting task. Yes, you can copy and paste and make some changes, still it takes a lot of time, and the chances of making some mistakes are probably fairly high, some typos. So I also have an additional 20 labels here for the numbers and the letters. But in C-sharp, we can create that all with a loop. And then there's the comfort of coding in C-sharp. Coming from a C-sharp background, you may be much more comfortable with C-sharp than XAML. I put that in gray here because that's not necessarily the best reason to do this. I think you need to be comfortable in XAML. Most projects are done with XAML rather than just C-sharp. There are advantages to knowing both. In a lot of cases, I'm creating XAML code and then manipulating that code in C-sharp. So it's a combination of the both. It's not just an either or. Let's take a look at how I did this in C-sharp. I'm in Visual Studio 2022, and I created a new .NET MAUI app and I called C-sharp UI demo. And I got the template where we have the main page XAML, didn't change anything there, in the main page XAML.cs as we get out of the template. But then what I did was I right clicked on my solution and chose add new class .NET MAUI. But rather than doing the content page XAML that we've done in the past, I did a content page C-sharp. And I named that C-sharp UI and added it to my project. So I get the C-sharp file in my solution and here's the code that I wrote for the project. So I started within the class of some class level containers or variables. As I mentioned, I wanna use that DIU width and height that we had from that very first project we did. And I'm gonna create a list of image buttons that I'm calling cells. That's gonna be a list that will contain all of my image buttons that I can refer to in code and be able to iterate through them. Then we have our constructor. And what I like to do in developing C-sharp UI code is create what I call an object factory. I create objects that I want to use in my interface. It doesn't matter the order you create these in, but these are objects that we would normally create in XAML. So I've got a grid and I just did, called it my grid and we'll do some manipulation of it later in the code. And then I created a label, LBL about, new label, and, and altered some of its properties, just as we would in XAML. Now notice that these are comma separated, and I put these in brackets. We could have done, instead of the brackets, I could have said LBL about dot equals new label with the parentheses and a semicolon, and then did LBL about dot text equals, LBL about font size equals. I like using the brackets here. It keeps everything readable. And I know this all then is associated with that label. I did the same thing for a label called LBL instructions. Now, one thing you'll notice, I set up a style ID called LBL spacer. We don't have the name extension available to us in the C sharp code, but you do have style ID, which is a unique identifier that you could use to identify an object from C sharp code. And I probably should have named that LBL instructions. LBL spacer was probably a copy and paste mistake. So it didn't make sense for that to be named LBL spacer. That's the end of my object factory. And then here's the code I copied and pasted from that very first project of finding the width and height. And then I set the font size to LBL about to that DU, DIU width divided by 45. So if I put this on a tablet versus a phone, that font size is gonna be larger on the tablet than on the phone because the width will be greater. Did the same thing for the font size of LBL instructions. Now I should point out that this code, this name of LBL instructions is not referring to the style ID, but to the name of the label itself. Then I'm gonna create my layout. 
and we're going to create our content equals. And I'm going to have a new vertical stack. And this is the default when you create a new C Sharp content page. You're going to get this content equals new vertical stack. I added in a margin of 20. Now notice again that within these parentheses, these are comma separated. And here's the children. Here's where I'm adding objects to that vertical stack layout. I'm going to create a new label. And in curly brackets, the text is going to be demo of UI by, uh, by C Sharp. Font size is going to be DIU width divided by 15. And my text color is going to be maroon. Set the font family, the horizontal options equals center. And then I'm adding a comma after that. So that's this is one object. Then my next object is going to be my grid that I created up above and then LBL about that I created above. We'll add the LBL instructions a little bit later. I'm going to add that into my grid. Okay, so that's that's my content page. Now I want to add image buttons to that grid. And I need to create the grid first. So I'm going to create a grid that's 12 by 12 in a loop and adding row definitions with a height of DIU width divided by 12. Again, this is where I'm using that dimensions of my device to size the grid. That's going to give me 144 cells of the grid. I'm only going to use the inner ones. The outer ones are really just kind of more for spacing. And that's just a choice that I made. It's not something that's required. We're going to add image buttons then using a loop. So I'm going to go from my rows of 1 through 10. Remember, there's 12 rows total. So I'm not using the 0 and the 11 row. And then for each row, I'm going to go to the columns 1 through 10, ignoring, again, the column of 0 and the column of 11. I'm going to create a string of IB plus the row number plus the, the column number. And that's going to be the name of my image button. I'm going to create a new image button. I'm going to set its height to the DIU width divided by 12. And the, the width request also DIU width divided by 12. Now notice that I didn't use the DIU height here. I want these to be the same. And I did the same thing up here on the row definition, setting the height and width to the DIU width divided by 12. I'm assuming a portrait view. If it's landscape, I probably want to do the height divided by 12. I'm going to give each of these image buttons a border width of one and a color of black. So give a little grid. And I'm going to add in a clicked event and in code, you've got to use the plus equals operator. So we're going to add in a method called image IMG BTN underscore clicked that you'll see further down below, just like as, as if we'd written our event handler in C sharp for XAML. Then I'm going to take the C plus 64. So one plus 64 is 65. That's going to, and take the char of that. That's the ASCII char value or, or Unicode char value. That's going to be a capital A. Next time with the two be a capital B and so forth. So I'm getting a letter corresponding to the column. And I'm going to use that in naming my image button. So style ID is going to equal AB plus the column char that I've just created and then the row number. So kind of that Excel format of cell A1, cell A2, cell B3. I want to do kind of a checkerboard appearance, just a very difference in terms of my colors. So I'm going to take X, Y, Z as an integer and take the row number and take the modulus value of two plus C. That's going to give me another, will allow me to evaluate it in the next line, doing a modulus of two so that I either set the color to light sky blue or sky blue. So I'm saying the background color of my image button. Then we're going to add to the grid the image button we just created, and I'm going to add it to the column and the row. Now it might seem a little bit reversed, so make sure that the, the, the second value here is your column and the row. In this case, it really doesn't matter if I'd swap those, but in some cases it might. So column comes before row. And that makes sense. If you think about Excel, you're going to reference the column first. So A1, D5. I'm going to add that image button to my list that I created up above called cells. Then I'm going to iterate through the cells to find the image button that the user clicks on. Or maybe we want to randomly choose an image button. So that's going to create all of the image buttons, 100 of them. Then I do another loop. Where I'm going to create the labels above the columns. This is going to be in row zero of my grid. And I'm just simply creating a new label, setting the text, again, finding the letter that I want to use for that text, the text color, the width, the height, and so forth. And then adding it to that grid, LBL column letter, column C. So 
we're going to go from 1 to 10, and then my row is 0. And then I'm going to create the row numbers. This is going to be in column 0, kind of the exact same thing. I'm creating a label. Here I'm just simply taking r.toString. I'm going to give me a value between 1 and 10 because my loop goes from 1 to 10. And I'm adding that label to column 0 and then row of r. And then finally, I'm going to add those instructions at the bottom in row 11. I'm going to start in column 0. So I'm going to add LBL instructions, but here's a little trick. I'm going to take the mygrid.set column span of LBL instructions and have it span across all 12 columns. And that's why I did this separately rather than adding it above. I want to show you how do you can add things into a grid and have it span. Grids work really well in doing C-sharp user interface code. Now we referenced up here the imgbtn.clicked being imgbtn underscore clicked. So I need to create that event handler. So here's my event handler for that. imgbtn underscore clicked, receiving the sender and the event args. And then I'm going to create the target that the user clicked on as type image button and sender as image button. So we're going to get that sender, convert it to an image button. Or if the background is not red for that target, I'm going to set it to red. Otherwise, I'm going to set it to the original color. Now remember, I used that checkerboard. So I had to calculate what was the original color. And I basically used the same thing I used above in terms of determining that color. And I'm looking for the R and C values, the row and column values here of that image button. I'm going to iterate through my cells list of all those image buttons. And if the target equals the cells, I want to find out what that index is. I can use that index value to figure out the column and the row that was in and then use the same format we used above in determining whether that color originally was light sky blue or sky blue. Now there's one more thing I need to do in order for my application to use this page rather than the main page. And as you might have guessed, we need to go to app.saml.cs and I need to change the main page equals new app shell to main page equals new C sharp UI. And that will allow it to launch this that page as its main page. Well, once again, let me start this up and you can see it run. Here's my project. I can click on the square and turn it red. Or I can also toggle them back to the original values. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the .NET My Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.